It was the day we'd all been waiting for. I drove for hours upon hours until I was finally able to reach the site where one day a new city would be born. It was here, me, and my company could begin anew and finally see our vision brought into reality. A paradise on Earth built upon these sweeping plains. Yes, yes. When I arrived here, I said to myself, this is the place. But before we could share our vision with the world, we needed a plan. here, I'm Diana, and I've been lucky enough to be one of a select group of creators given early access to start a new city in City Skylines 2. Because I'm more of a sandbox player, I've chosen to play with unlimited money, as the core focus of this episode is going to be getting a nice starting layout for the city before we move any people in. While I do have access to the new grid tool and could just do that and start spamming zones and buildings, I find it rather limiting and want to be a bit more creative with the starting layout and take my time with it and put a lot of thought into doing so. Right out the gate, eventually when I unlocked more tiles, I know I want this starting road to become a highway, so I'm using one-way roads to create it. The upgrade functionality and road tools in general function a little differently than in Cities 1. For one-ways, you can use the left mouse button and drag in the direction of traffic. I also noticed that Cities 2 has a bit more freedom as to where you can place things, but it's still not true network anarchy like many modded CS1 players are used to. The Parallel Tool is a nice addition, which was previously a mod in Cities 1. Although I'm a little sad it doesn't allow for more than two roads at a time or using two different networks. So sadly, I can't easily spam 64 lane highways. Only six lanes? Pathetic. Although Cities 2 has built in interchanges, at this stage of the game, I haven't unlocked any highways yet. And building interchanges was one of my favorite parts of Cities 1. So I'm using regular roads to build one. Starting with a four lane road, I push page up once and it elevates it perfectly above the other roads. Another mod, Precision Engineering, was built into Cities 2, but it's got even more functionality than the first game's version. I love that it gives us percentage grade of sloped roads, and in general, slopes seem to be a bit smoother in this game overall. The meter measurement is a bit tricky to get used to compared to unit measurements provided with CS1's Precision Engineering mod, but it's not a big adjustment once you get used to it, and it feels a little more realistic to measure things this way. The curve tools feel a little different than in Cities 1, and I'm still getting a feel for how they work. Although generally I do like how the game handles adding lanes as off ramps and intersections in general with automatic marking, but it can be limiting to those who are used to intersection marking tool and move it. But for a console or vanilla player, they're a massive upgrade. I'm doing my best to create a simple partial cloverleaf, but using these regular roads is very clunky and I don't recommend doing it and instead waiting until you have highways unlocked to attempt any sort of interchange work. If you keep on looking at me like that And you don't know what you do to me And I would probably go and end it all if you found out No words can explain what I'm feeling Being with you feels as easy Some trial and error, I've discovered that the best road length to get maximum zoning density with no empty space is 120 meters. So I'm building my main grid in multiples of this number, as CS2 in its current build has no props whatsoever. And trees, when planted, start as seedlings and take a very long time to grow. As a heavy detailer, I'm severely disappointed in this, and generally the game's focus on management over aesthetics is something that a lot of players will enjoy. But for my preferred playstyle and that of a good number of YouTubers, it leaves a lot to be desired. I'm certain modders and asset makers will pick up some of the slack, but to not see any props or fully grown trees, at least in this early access version, is a massive L in my opinion. 
and it keeps me going back to Cities 1 to get my detailing fix. Generally, both games have their positives and negatives, and given CS2 hasn't even been released to the general public yet, I'm going to withhold most criticism before its proper release, as I believe it's still worth giving a fair shot, as we've barely scratched the surface of what this game's potential is. At this point, I decided to plop down some infrastructure buildings to get started. I chose a coal power plant and placed it near the edge of my starting tile. I like that you don't need a road to place buildings and you can just add the road later. The electricity system in this game is something that I'm still figuring out. With the main power plant connecting to transformers and being able to place power lines underground and them being built into roads is a nice update. Generally, I was a power user of the Toggleit mod in Cities 1 to get rid of the automatic info views and white space when placing ploppable buildings, as I feel that that switch is somewhat distracting in certain cases, and the colors just generally feel a bit imposing. You can disable this each time using the I key, but as of today, there's not a way to globally disable it, and it shows up pretty much with everything you build except roads and paths, including zoning. I never liked this feature and still don't, and it's a shame they've expanded it even more. But I can see how it benefits those whose core focus is on city management, as the info views do provide a lot of great stuff. One thing I do love about cities too is the cut and fill. With some buildings, if the terrain is uneven, you can place a road next to it and it creates these beautiful retaining walls, which in cities one were a pain to make, even with mods. So I love that it's automatic, and I can't wait to see how modders and asset makers introduce new textures to the retaining walls for us to play around with. While it may be disappointing to hear, almost none of TMPE's functionality is built into Cities 2. We do have this new road tool menu that allows you to control stop lights, stop signs, disable left and right turns, as well as roadside lighting, and wider sidewalks, crosswalks, and trees on roads. Its function reminds me a lot of a cross between network skins and adaptive networks, but hardcore traffic management tools seen in TMPE do not exist in vanilla CS2 as of today, so keep that in mind. Another neat new feature I like is groundwater pumping stations. This is one situation where the info views are helpful. The purple shows groundwater which will guide players in where to place these pumps and what areas to avoid placing polluted uses, and water pipes already under the road is a game changer, as I always hated placing them. Progression works differently in cities too. I have no population, but I still unlock Tiny Village as buildings grant XP points. With this, we will unlock a few new service buildings and get one development point to spend. Because I'm focusing on road layout for this episode, I'm gonna unlock advanced road services for my first point. For sewage, we start with the classic sh water drain. And in cities too, sewage pipes and water pipes are separate and dedicated lines that need to be connected on their own. Another service I unlocked that I wanted to place up front was garbage. The new landfill mechanic where you draw out a district for it was a bit difficult for me to grasp at first, but eventually I got it. I think it's a neat feature and looks much better than landfills in the first game. A little hack to unlock milestones that few of us have just discovered is if you spam windmills, you'll get 100 XP for each one. But also, I just thought they'd look nice near the river for now, and once we bring in people, we'll have plenty of power. I don't know why I placed the cemetery next to the landfill, I guess they're compatible uses in a way. Interestingly enough, two upgrades were already unlocked and you can place these modular add-ons anywhere along the sides of the building. It's a neat mechanic in theory, but feels a little awkward and clunky in my opinion. You can easily relocate any building by pressing this button. It's not quite move it level functionality, but it's better than nothing. The terrain was super uneven here, so I decided to mess around with it. Generally, the terraforming tools are much better than in Vanilla Cities 1, but at least in this early access beta, there are no yeah. contour lines whatsoever, which again I feel is a major oversight. I found time and time again that the areas I thought were totally flat were not at all, and I had no real way of telling until it was too late. Upon unlocking Small Village, I was able to access schools and a few other buildings, and I spent my development points to unlock highways so I can continue my road design. Again, the info views screen when placing schools feels really overbearing, and I don't like it at all. And generally, I think the designs of the schools themselves, while better than base game cities one, feel a little odd, and I'm not sure how I feel about the scale of them yet, but I thought they'd be a great fit for the first part of the neighborhood that we're gonna build later. It was at this point, I knew what had to be done. I was appalled by how few lanes my associate had installed in our fine city to be. It was time to take matters into my own hands. I converted that poor excuse for a highway to 10 lanes in total and made sure that the interchange she installed was as clean as possible. Our city deserved much better than this mess. 
If we were to build paradise on Earth, the roads must be in top condition so every potential driver can get where they need to go uninhibited. I don't know, Aaron. I feel like pedestrian paths in between the larger blocks would be a nice amenity. We should really work on the walkability of the place before we start zoning. Walkability? We never plan for walkability, Diana. Have you gone soft? At least we can put in a road maintenance depot to ensure our roads never wear out. And I'm liking these little alleys. They are cute and they work well for smaller blocks. I can't believe this. I thought this city would be perfect. It was to be our magnum opus, our piano concerto number two. Instead, it's mid as fuck. It's okay, Aaron. We'll get to it next time. Just be patient. You can never sleep in traffic Just living steady panic I know cause I try asking Now I see through your habits Just like gadgets You tell me with the two hands I'm too bad Now of course, next time wasn't good enough for me With a little bit of effort I was able to convince my colleague to purchase seven new tiles of land with which I could finally see my true vision realized. The plan was to remove that silly little peanut interchange built by the state government and extend out our new highway to the outside world. As expected, a few babies screamed and cried saying that all of this was overkill for a city with no population. But we didn't fucking care. We were able to build a magnificent six-way double cloverleaf interchange in the center of it all, finally turning it into a true automotive paradise. Now every motorist who chooses to call our new city home will be able to drive here without ever having to worry about being backed up in a dumb little roundabout ever again. Our state-of-the-art triple-decker masterpiece will be marveled at for all of eternity. It is something my esteemed mentor, Robert Moses, could only dream of during the short time he walked this earth. The will of Lane Man was finally done. Now we truly were open for business. If you have any questions about Cities 2, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments to the best of my ability. While I can't reveal everything I know quite yet, I'll be releasing more of this city build in the coming weeks to be announced. So please stick around for that. And if you're new to my channel, I do a lot of various types of Cities 1 builds and tutorials and satire and a bunch of different stuff. So if any of that's your thing, start here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos.